Hi folks, welcome. It's the 18th of March. I'm just doing some glazing here, so I'll just come over here, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, these are some some tankards that I've been glazing in this particular way. These in fact are an order for going to the Netherlands. So I've got to get on with those. Um, I've got them complete except I've not done the sources as yet. Also some some bud vases over there in my in my white glaze which I'm going to be decorating shortly. Then I've got some of these here, these Ingle Bean um, tankers, which I'm going to be just doing a few more glazing there of those. I just want to show you something actually in relation to that. Then I've got these little espresso, espresso tankards. Um, just miniature tankards really. I've got to make some sauces for those. So that is coming up. Oh yeah, a few more things over here to be glazed. Well, these are already part glazed. I've done the inside, the inside glazing. Of course, these are these raw raw ware. We glaze in two parts: inside first, and then the outside. Okay. So. This is just a quick clip just to bring you up to speed with what I'm doing. So let's put this on the tripod here. Yeah, so yeah, I've just made up some glaze. You were well you were you saw me do it. This is that glaze, and then I mixed up a small batch of uh, this is a temaku. Mrs. Newton's tem Temaku, actually. Um, I don't know what happened with the Temaku. I used to do tem I used to, I like Temaku, but it just just the recipe went wrong. I just couldn't get. I couldn't seem to repeat it. And every batch I did, it just seemed to come out just not the same. So I've done it again, and I've added a little bit more synthetic red iron oxide. And I put it through a 100 mesh sieve instead of an 80 mesh sieve. I don't know if it's going to make any difference. But that's why I only made up a small amount, because I didn't want to... I didn't want to make up, you know, like a full bucket and then find that it was not working for me. Anyhow, um, yeah, so what I'm doing here is... These are these tankards for Dennis down at the Ingleby. So I've done the inside and now I'm going to just dip down over the over the the top here and over the handle so when you're putting your 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 pot into the glaze you want to get an even an even depth of glaze all the way around here like that you want to make try to get it as much as you can the same and it's not always that easy surprisingly you know when you take the the tankard and you you put it down into the glaze and when you pull it up and you look at it and you think oh it's all lopsided you know do you do you ever do that you kind of get it it's it's not it's not equal the same all the way around so i've struggled with that sometimes i'm better at it than other days you know it's like and if it gets wildly off, I don't like it. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just eat, even it out, you know, with a with a sponge. But I just had an idea, which I'm just sort of experimenting with, and that is, somebody gave me one of these guys. Can you see what it is? It's got like a little bubble in it there, so that so theoretically, when the bubble is in the in the middle. It's at dead level, you see. So my plan. Now I think you, these are fairly readily available. You can get these. So let's see if I can. I just had this idea a moment ago. So. Let's 
see. So taking a mug like that, so now I want to get a dead even line down to about there where it just sticks out a bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that there like that. And now I'm going to centralize that bubble. He's very sensitive, he moves around a lot, that's the thing. So now I'm going to go down into the liquid, keeping the bubble in the middle, and now bring him up. Let's have a look. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, I've got to do the handle. So just dip the handle, you see. Like that. So you get a little bit of, because these are unglazed on the outside here. Um, so we just take the, a little bit of glaze over the handle there so it feels nice. And, yeah, that's, that's what I would say that's worked pretty well, hasn't it? Top mark what? See if we can repeat it. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Yes, this looks like we are. Okay, let's do that again. So, all right, ready to dip. Put him there like that. And now centralize the bubble in the in the in the window there. He he, he moves around. Okay, bring him up and do the handle. Bob's your uncle. Got to be straight, you see, look at that. Not too bad, is he? Well, you're not going to get him. That's straight enough for our purposes, I would say. So here's a point just to bring up. You, you saw, well, I don't know if you saw me do these particular ones, but you know, when I, 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 I pour in the glaze, when I'm doing the inside, okay, and then I, and then I pour it out. So after I poured it out, you'll see I take a sponge and I just wipe over the top there like that to wipe off the excess glaze that would go over, would likely run over the edge here a bit as I pour it out. I wipe it back, you see. So that, you see, I want you to see how much, if it's possible to see, how much I've wiped it back there. Don't over wipe it back. Because in the next operation, which is now, when I come to dip the, the, the top, um, it, might, it might leave if you wipe it back too much. Okay, let's centralize that bubble. Up. Yeah, I would say that's actually... I would say that's well, that works pretty well, wouldn't you? Pretty well. Now let's just, just look, look there, you see? Now you see... Can you see the extent that the, the glaze... It just goes over the edge, you see? So you don't want it, that's why I say don't wipe it back too much because you, you, otherwise you can have a little exposed bit where there is no glaze. All right, that's good. Okay, so here's a tip. When you're doing, when you're glazing, like I, you see I'm doing, I'm not really dipping the pot down into the glaze much. I'm just, just dipping it down, say, you know, an inch or three quarters of an inch here. The, the, the contents of the glaze will begin to sediment out it's quicker than you think. So the top surface of the water here can already start to get watery. In other words, the glaze is already sinking. So if you're doing this, particularly this kind of glazing, where you're just dipping down a little bit, you want to keep your glaze on the move more often, more. Because it's not getting naturally mixed up so much, you see. Okay, let's do it. Mm. 
You've got to watch the bubble, but at the same time watch the the line. I guess I'll get better at it as I practice. Pretty good, hey? Maybe this is an already known idea, I don't know. I guess it's logical. But I've not, I've not seen anybody do it. All right, this is the last one of these. Watching the bubble and also watching the... So these guys, now that they're, I've done that to all of them, they're going to be banded around the top and then be sprayed over with wood ash. Uh, I, I've got one on my iPad here, I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, well here they here they are. These are some ones I did last time, you see. Well, actually these ones in the front here, these are the espresso. And the ones in the back across there, those are the taller ones, the tankards, the ones that like I'm doing now. So you'll see that they'll have this, um, yeah. So that's how they're gonna be banded, you see, across the top with some iron across the rim there, just a, a line, a blue line underneath, cobalt. Uh, and then the outside is sprayed with with some wood ash. That's those ones, that's these ones here. And then the ones there, Dennis's ones with the ingle bean, they're, they're not done like that because they don't have the glaze on the outside. But they'll just be sprayed with wood ash, you see, just to give that sort of nice toasty look. So there, there you go. Hey folks, thanks for joining me here in the studio. Uh, as far as I know, workshops are ongoing, um, but you know, well, <laughs> I guess we don't know really, do we? Um, for those people who are coming on my workshop here at the end of this month, um, Yeah, I have nobody's contacted me to say that they're not coming, and I'm I'm planning to go ahead. So, you know, if you want to come and bring a face mask, that is fine. Um, we'll have lots of disinfectant here, and I'm I'm going to bring in my ozonator. I have an ozonating machine to pr introduce a bit of ozone into the air, which will help just a little bit. Well, it helps in case there are any bugs and germs around. It's antiviral, you know, ozone. It's a great uh, antiviral, uh, antibacterial, anti-germ is ozone. So yeah, that's that. Planning to go ahead with that. Just to say, I've, I'm picking up some wheels, probably the end of this week or early next week. If anybody's interested in a leech treadle wheel, I will have one available anyway, in kit form. If that interests you, let me know. The other thing I would like to ask you is because of now a, lo a lot of my workshops which I was, I told you the other day that I was going off to teach my workshops in New Jersey were cancelled the other day, my two workshops down in San Antonio, Texas were cancelled so you know, who knows where this is all going um, but I'm thinking, you know, people will still want to be making pots, won't they? They'll still want to be out in their studio. In fact, they're going to be probably spending more time at home. And we all are, I suppose, as we restrict our being out in the public arena so much. So that probably will mean that people will be wanting to be, they'll have more time maybe, they'll be at home more, to be in their pottery studios. So... 
Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Well, how can I sort of instead of me going out teaching workshops, maybe I could come into your home, you know, through through uh, via the internet, you know, through uh, through webcam. That's that's something we've done before in the past with with people, you know, given lessons like that. So that's something I'd be prepared to do. If that interests people, you know, and we try not to make it too expensive so people can afford it. I appreciate people can't always afford it, you know. Uh, maybe some helpful pointers, you know, if you could set up a webcam by your wheel. And then um, I could come along and, uh, and help you through, through a few things if, if you were having some difficulties or, or just, you know, just to, or maybe me on the wheel, just, uh, well I guess that's what I do on YouTube anyway, you see me doing that. Um, but if that's something that interests you, write to me, say yes, I think it's a great idea, I don't know if I'll, I'll be doing it, but I can see that that would be a, a good way these days. We've got to use the technology, haven't we, if we can't, if we can't meet up, we're going to have to meet up online, I guess. So that's that. Um, maybe workshops later on in the year, you know, we'll be okay. We'll be able to, we'll be able to carry on with the um, workshop schedule. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. So yes, yeah. If you have any other thoughts about coronavirus, how do we keep our sanity? How do we keep healthy? What do we eat? How can we improve our immune system? You know, then please feel free to share that. Don't feel that it has to always be limited to pottery. Although that's what we do generally, isn't it? We talk about pots and clay and all that kind of thing. But you know what, I'm quite open to talking about all sorts of things, you know. You know, life, faith, religion, fun, adventure, travel, whatever. Maybe we just turn it into a chat show or something. <laughs> or we have a group, a, group, a, group com a group conversation that people can just enter into. I don't know if there's some program on the internet where you can do that. I don't know if Skype, if Skype is good for that. I think there's one actually called Zoom. Zoom. Have you heard of that? Zoom? People have recommended that to me, where you can have many, many people, and you can have a sort of, uh, just a sort of like a chat in, you know, and everybody's there, just can join the show or, or leave. Anyway, I don't know. I sometimes think, you know, well, okay, so life, if life gives you lemons, then, then make lemonade, as they say. And, um, yeah, it, it sometimes uh, something like this is uh, is uh, is good. It's not all negative. You know, we feel it's negative initially because we feel our routine is disrupted and we can't stand it. You know, but if we can try to think uh, on the positive side and see it as actually, well, you might find now that we've got time to do things that we never usually had time to do, which is sort of forced upon us maybe, but. Nevertheless, it, it turns out that it's good, you know. I always remember my mother, my mum and dad, they grew, up, they grew up in the war, in the war years. So my parents were married in 1938 and they, um, they were a young, young couple, you know, in the Second World War, in, in England, in Cornwall, England. And my mother, you know, there were hardships. But I remember my mother would say, oh, I love, I love the war years. There was such a, there was such a unity in the country. Because we were being attacked, you know, by, by Hitler and his uh, people, you know. And um, so there were shortages. So people with coupons, you know, people did swapping, you know, well, I've got, I've got sugar, I don't want so much sugar, but if you've got some flour, so people would trade sugar for flour, for toothpaste, for whatever it was, you know. And um, 
she said it, w it was such a nice time, you know, because it was everybody. We were everybody was together. Everybody was fighting, you know. Well, we were fighting. They were fighting for their lives, you know, fighting for their for the country, you know, to to maintain our values and our, and be in control of our own nation. So those were good. T those were hard times, but they were in, in many ways they were good times. So maybe that's what we have to do and uh, pull together, not pull apart. So, yeah, lots to say about that, I guess. A lot of thoughts there. Okay, folks, well, that's it for now. Uh, you see my little, this is what I really wanted to show you, my bullseye. <laughs> I don't know what they call that. It's a, it's a sort of, it's a level. It's a level. Um, and I think it works actually rather well. It's quite, as you see me using it, it's quite quick. All you do, you see, you just put it on the bottom of the pot like that and... So, maybe give it a go. If you're somebody who struggles a little bit with glazing and with, um, you know, not making rather a mess maybe of things, you might think that you're a little bit clumsy and it always comes out a bit messy. Well, maybe something like this could help you. Okay, folks, that's it for now. Keep practicing. I'll see you around. Keep practicing. Good hygiene. <laughs> and get your hands dirty at the same time in the clay. All right. Bye.